Hello Internet! I am RD Lady and this is the last part of our animation tutorial. In the first and second part of this tutorial I have shown you how to create a skeleton using the biped system of 3ds Max and I've shown you how to attach this skeleton to the 3D model. Now I'm gonna show you some techniques to refine this attachment between the 3D model and the skeleton by finding and fixing any wrong distortions in our 3D model. Once we have all these problems solved, then we can start to import and test any animations. We're gonna be testing many different poses here for identifying any wrong torsions in our 3D model. So let's save a copy of this original pose in case we want to go back to the original pose after trying each new pose. For testing any poses we have to disable any faces or element selections as well. So you can see this type of problem here when you have uh, faces or vertices that are not following the bones correctly. So I will have here to redefine this bone area, the cylinder, or I can select those rebel vertices and tell them to follow the nearest bone available in a rigid way. And this is how you do it. So every time I test a new pose and I see any wrong deformations in my 3D model, I go back to that skin modifier and I try to redefine the size and position of the cylinder that is around the bone that is causing the wrong deformation. So I keep adjusting that cylinder until I see that there is no wrong deformation anymore. And I keep adjusting those cylinders until I see no wrong torsions or wrong deformations in the current pose. When I don't see any wrong deformations anymore for this pose, then I can move to the next pose. And if just defining the cylinders doesn't work, we can always select the vertices and try to attach these vertices rigidly to the bones.
I'm just gonna show a couple of poses but usually I try about 20 different poses or as many that make me feel comfortable with the distortions and deformations of my 3D model. So for example, I test to rise the feet, to rise the legs, rise the arms, twist the hands, uh, bend the fingers, make sitting positions, running positions, walk positions, jump positions, or rock star positions, or any other positions that may be challenging for this system. For beginning to work with animations, we have to disable the figure mode. So we're not gonna be working anymore on attaching the skeleton to the model, but we're gonna start to move the skeleton for making an animation. So to start our first simple animation, we're gonna be working with auto keys and keyframes. So all the animations have a start position and an end position. So if for example, I wanna animate the hand of the alchemist making her waving her hand saying goodbye for example the start position is going to be one keyframe where her hand will be on the left and the end position for example will be another keyframe where she puts the hand on the right and all the movements between these two keyframes the start keyframe and the end keyframe will be defined automatically by the auto key function in 3ds max this is a simple way to explain what is a keyframe and an auto key function in 3ds max but usually animations have multiple keyframes these keyframes are usually checkpoint positions that will guide the auto key function to produce a smooth movement. So here I'm gonna show an example of a simple waving hand animation, enabling the auto key function and setting keyframes.
So this is basically how you do an animation in 3ds Max. You start with a bone or a set of bones positioned and you set a keyframe. Then you go forward in the timeline and you move that bone or those bones and you set another keyframe. And you keep in the cycle of moving bones and setting keyframes until the animation looks fine for you. That's basically how you do animations in 3ds Max. So this was an example of a very simple animation. If the animation is too fast or too slow, you can always drag and drop those keyframes in the timeline or you can rescale the animation using the rescale tool. Another important function for the animation in 3ds Max is the import function. We can select the biped skeleton and import any animation in biped or BIP format or any motion capture file in BVH format. So let's test importing a biped animation file. So let's say I want to export this animation and use this animation in a game engine to develop a game uh, either in Unity or in Unreal Engine for example. We can export this animation project in FBX format using the settings I'm gonna show you here. Then you can import this FBX file into your game engine. Well, I think that's all for this tutorial. I have basically shown you the most critical and essential things to start working with animations. If you got stuck in any of these steps, or if there is anything that is confusing in this tutorial, please don't forget to leave a comment in this video, so I can try to help you. And please like this video if you like this tutorial, and subscribe to this channel to receive new tutorials. See ya!